Hi, I'm Niall from Gulfstream Boat Sales. Today we're taking a look around a Glastron GS279 a diesel sports cruiser. Um, we've had it come outside today because this boat has a fixed radar, radar arch which just makes it a little bit too big to fit in our normal photo shed but we've got a pretty nice day for it so hopefully uh, you can still get a really good look around the boat. It is a 2005 model so it was built in 2005. It's a genuine UK boat, CE certified, it's category B rated for offshore use and it's fitted with a Volvo Penta CAD 32 170 horsepower diesel stern drive engine matched up to a dual prop drive. Um, the boat's in really nice condition, it's been well looked after, it's um, got good capability as a coastal cruiser, um, it's got a huge big cabin, there's four berths in it, nice sociable uh, seating layout in the cockpit out here and it's going to make an, ac an excellent step up from a sports cutty. The boat's 27 and a half feet long which makes it about two or three feet longer than your, your standard entry level sports cruiser which is very, really good because it means you give you more cockpit space and more cabin space but at the same time it's still only eight foot six wide so it means you can still take the boat on a trailer uh, legally on the road and this one comes complete with a twin axle uh, UK spec road trailer so um, the whole package is in really nice condition it's 2005 like I said with a diesel engine on a trailer the full camper coverage everything's all working as it should all in really nice sort of shape and the whole thing is for less than 30 grand it's fantastic value as well um, so what we're going to do we're going to take a really uh, detailed look around the boat uh, show you all the features and things on board show you the condition that it's in um, we're also going to run the engine, put the boat in the, through its paces in the water and just generally try to give you a better idea of uh, whether this might be the right boat for you. Taking a quick look around the exterior of this boat, it really is in very nice condition indeed. Um, we've given it a little compound and polish, we've just brought the gel coat back up to its original shine um, and it's looking really good. There's virtually well, there's no scrapes or damage anywhere around the hull, um, really nice deep shine to the gel coat. We've also just cleaned up the antifouling a little bit. It does need a fresh, a full coat right underneath the boat. Um, but we've just tidied it up for the pictures. Um, but yeah, you can see that the boat looks fantastic. All the hardware, all the stainless steel rails and cleats, nav lights, everything's all, all there. It's all in nice condition. It's all solid and secure. As are all the other little, you know, little hull fittings. Um, everything's just in really nice shape right here. It's got this nice uh, glass from blue and that's set off with some navy anti fouling paint there as well. Um, all the, the graphics, the glass the light, the stickers, the model designator, that's all in really good shape as well. Down along the starboard side then, again, the condition's very nice. There are a couple of little small marks on this side. We've got one little small chip here, which is about, it's about half the size of my fingernail. Um, very minor. We've got some fender uh, rub marks here. We've sort of cleaned up a little bit. You can still, if you're looking really closely, you can see that. Um, but apart from that, yeah, this side of the boat's really nice as well. And again, these are the type of things that are usual on a boat of this age, and you really have to be looking close to spot them. Uh, if I didn't point them out, you'd probably never see them. Um, rub rail and everything's in really nice condition. All the hard rail, or the hardware, the, the stainless steel uh, components are all in very good shape. We've got a diesel fill point. We've got a diesel full point on this side of the boat as well. Again, the glass and stickers, all the the, the, the the hull fittings and things are all in very good condition. Taking a look at the transom then, the boat has a full width, so a platform that's integrated into the hull. Probably about 18 inches to 2 feet wide, 2 feet deep. We've got a folding, 3 step stainless steel board ladder here. We've got a stainless steel handrail. We've also got this, this nice stainless steel fender basket store probably three fenders across the back of the boat which is really good means not kicking or, you know, they're not kicking around inside the cockpit. We've got a center ski tow point on this boat as well which is not always common on a sports cruiser so if you, you want to pull water toys or something like that you can do that. Uh, this boat also has a couple of uh, these snap cabins so if you want to store a dinghy on the transom you can do that very easily just clips into the davits and you can fold it up against the back of the boat. Um, so if you're going on longer trips away and you want to you're planning on anchoring off beaches and things, you want an easy way to get in and out to the shore. Um, this is a really good thing to have as well. Condition again back here is very good. There was obviously some previous uh, davits fitted at one stage, so we've got a couple of holes which have been filled and they're fine. Um, but you can just see them again if you look closely. The boat is fitted with, a, as I've said before, a Volvo Cat 32 
a turbo diesel engine and it's matched up to this Volvo dual prop drive. Um, so the benefit of the dual prop, you've got twin counter rotating propellers here. It means that at slow speed, the boat tracks much better in a straight line. So you, you don't have to sit sawing away at the steering wheel whenever you're coming into the harbour or just you know idling down a river or something. It gives the boat very good uh, tracking. And the other thing is it, tra it transfers the power to the water more efficiently so you get better acceleration onto the plane and the boat will also stay on the plane down to lower speeds. Um, so it's a really good drive. This is a, a, a well-proven drive, the standard Volvo Geo prop. It's in good condition. The bellows and things are in good shape. The props and everything are in very good shape. Um, and it, yeah, it's running really well, which you can see from the water test footage as well. The boat's fitted with trim tabs on the either side of the transom there as well that just, um, again, uh, help you to get on the plane at lower speeds if you want to, if you drop both tabs down and they also help you to correct the running angle of the boat so you can level yourself up if you're running into a crosswind or something uh, and they're all in good working order as well. Um, so we've got a nice high transom in this boat. We've got a transom gate on the port side um, with a flat, the flat floor throughout so access in and out is very good so we'll take a look up and around the cockpit now. Access into the cockpit is through that um, opening gate on the transom. So you can close that door and lock it, keep kids and things in, safely on board, um, but it gives you nice uh, unfettered access into the cockpit here. Uh, we've got a nice spacious layout here. Um, first of all, we've got a bench seat across the back, which will accommodate sort of three adults. Uh, we've got another um, twin wide seat uh, facing aft as well. So you have nice, this nice sort of sociable seating arrangement around this little cockpit table, which you can remove as well. And stow downstairs, they open up the cockpit space. We have a little wet bar here on the port side as you come in with a, a pressurized sink and tap. And we've got a, like a cool box thing underneath that. Um, then coming further forward, we've got a port side lounger. So it's like a full recliner with this uh, backrest up here. And then we've got this twin wide helm seat, which is a really nice touch so two people can sit up with the helm facing forward. Now this seat also folds out flat in the sun pad as well, so if you want to take the covers down uh, and put a sun bait, you can do that on the seat here. So the condition of everything in the, in the cockpit is really good. Um, the carpets are in nice shape. Um, all the stainless steel work and things, the stainless steel handrail and all is very good condition. Um, the canopies, the boat has a full set of camper canvas, canvas covers, so as you can see, they extend right out to the full, width, the full length of the cockpit. Um, we've got all the side curtains and the front and back curtains as well, so you can fully enclose this um, cockpit. So if you're staying on the boat or if you're out and it's raining or whatever, you can just close the boat up and it gives you full living space inside here. Um, all the covers are in, are in great shape as well, like the frames, the clips, everything's all working as it should. The upholstery itself is in nice condition, it's still nice and soft, the, the stitching is very good, the glass and emblems are, are all in good shape. Um, the only little thing that probably lets it down a, a wee bit is a bit of a rust stain on this seat here, where somebody's obviously just sat, sat like a metal can or something there. Um, it probably would come out with a bit more elbow grease, um, but that's the only thing that, that lets the, the cockpit down. And one other thing I should point out is just the hinge on this, um, this fridge uh, thing. If it was my boat, I'd probably replace this with like a, a, a new refrigerator, a proper 12 volt fr refrigerator. It's, it's just a cool box and the, the hinge is damaged so it's been filled with a bit of silicon there. But um, still works and all and it's, it's fine. But um, again, very these are very minor things. Generally speaking, everything's in nice condition um, up in here. The helm position on the boat is, um, is very nice actually. We've got this twin wide helm seat, like I said, so you can have a passenger sitting alongside you here. Um, the seat, when it's not height adjustable, you can slide it forward and back. Uh, and the steering wheel is a five position tilt as well. Volvo Penta steering wheel, it's a lovely uh, wooden rimmed wheel. We've also got a raised footrest here as well, so you can brace yourself against the seat in rougher weather. Um, the actual dash itself is finished in this sort of, it's really like a wood grain uh, effect, and it, it looks it's very modern looking, nice and fresh as well. The helm position itself, whenever I'm sitting down, I've got clear visibility through the screen. We've got a little windscreen wiper there as well. Um, but there's also plenty of room. You can slide the, the seat back further. Um, and you've got plenty of room to stand at the helm as well. So if you're coming alongside, um, you can uh, you get much better visibility around the boat. The throttle lever is uh, in the standard place over on the right hand side here. And then we've got a full range of equipment and dials and things that we'll take a look at. So we've got 
full range of faria, the gauges, giving us oil pressure, temperature, volts, fuel level, all that type of thing. We've got a, a taco with a digital hour meter, so it's showing 251.7 hours on the engine, which is very low hours, particularly for a diesel. Um, and uh, it means there's, there's bags of life left in this boat, obviously. We've got uh, the Volvo trim gauge here, digital trim uh, gauge to tell you the position of the, the drive leg, and we've also got a digital depth sounder as well. In terms of electronics then, we've got a Garmin GPS map 182C color chart plotter, it's in perfect work on order, and we've got a Cobra uh, VHF radio as well, this little external speaker mic is uh, up on top of the dash. Um, we've got all our 12 volt switch gear here, we've got a little uh, instrument panel for the Volvo engine, so your little digital warning system there. Um, we've got a spotlight, a remote control spotlight up on the 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 bow of the boat, it's in perfect work on order. That's really handy to have if you're coming into you know, your, your berth at night time or coming into an unfamiliar harbour after dark, it's really good to have that. And the boat's also fitted with an anchor windlass as well, Maxwell windlass which is controlled from this uh, switch just on the, the lower part of the dash. Um, that's really handy for, for anchoring the boat, um, it means you don't have to go out and fight with a chain and the rope up in the front of the boat. And then we've got controls for our trim tabs on the back of the boat as well, so they're they're easy to control from up here. Um, so the boat's really well set up, and all this gear's super handy to have. This boat um, does, I mean, it's Category B rated, so it's offshore rated for 10 people, um, and it does have really good coastal cruising credentials. This one, the current owner, is from Carrick Fergus in Northern Ireland. He, he actually was telling me that he bought the boat in Wales, and he motored her home. Um, he went up via the Isle of Man and, and took her up through, you know, stopped off in the Isle of Man and then took her from the Isle of Man up into the, the Belfast Lock and into Carrick Fergus Marina. And he had no problems, you know, it's, it's, and it's, you know, it's, the fact that you can do those sort of journeys on a boat like this really does open up um, your cruising horizons. Uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to fire up the engine so you can hear how well it runs. And we're also going to put the boat in the water and show you what the performance is like. It's got the Volvo Pentacad 32, it's 170 horsepower, which I know some people sometimes query, is it enough horsepower for a boat of this size? But the thing about the, the glass room, it's um it's it's not super heavy built, you know, it's 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 strong and it's well well constructed, but that engine, the 170 horsepower maxed up with the weight of the boat, is more than adequate to get her up on the plane quickly and keep her going at a, at a reasonable uh, rate of knots as well whenever you're underway. Um, so, plus the other thing about it is you can't really compare horsepower numbers like for like between a petrol and a, a diesel engine. So although you might get a petrol engine in this boat with 260 horsepower, the torque is actually the torque is the important number. That's the one that you know. That's the torque that gets you up on the plane and keeps you on the plane. Um, and the the torque figures for a 170 horsepower diesel versus a 260 horsepower petrol are very similar. So in terms of the actual performance, getting the boat up on the plane, um, the diesel performs virtually identically to the, the petrol. No, it will top out quicker, so you'll get a higher top speed with a petrol engine because that's whenever your power comes into play. Um, but if you're not concerned with out and out speed and you want a bit of economy and reliability then the, the diesel is probably the, the engine to go for and it, it is definitely the more popular of the, of the two in, in a boat of this size and type. Um, so yeah, have a look for yourself and you can see how it runs in the water anyway. To get access into the engine bay, just remove the back seat, it pulls out nice and easy and then there's a, an access hatch here on a, a gas assist or a couple of gas assist struts. So it gives you access down into the engine bay here, um, and as you can see, we've got a Volvo Cad 32 uh, compressor engine. It's in really nice condition actually. Um, there's no corrosion really around it that I can see. Um, it's running really nicely. The boat's going very well as well. It gives this boat a good turn of speed. It jumps up on the plane um, in no time at all, uh, and runs well at, uh, at sort of cruising RPMs. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to fire this engine up so you can hear it running and then we're going to put the boat in the water as well to give you just a better idea so you can see for yourself exactly how well the boat performs with that motor. Being a diesel obviously it's very reliable and also runs on a sniff of fuel. The fuel consumption in this boat is outstanding so if you're looking for a like a coastal cruiser something that you're looking to maybe do longer distances with this boat's ideal. Um, largely because of that diesel engine and, and the, the range and fuel economy that you get from it.
access down into the cabin then is through this uh, sliding door and there's a, two steps down into this uh, sort of companionway. Um, now the condition, everything in here is very nice actually, in, in very good condition. Um, and it looks like it's been very little used as well. But the layout is it's pretty standard, so we've got a, a galley um, on the port side as you come in here. With a Corian effect countertop, we've got a single burner uh, alcohol or electric a stove. This little wooden chocolate board sits over the top of it. We've got our stereo head unit, Claren Marine Grade uh, stereo unit there. And we've got a 12 volt refrigerator underneath the, the counter as well. There's also plenty of storage in this in this galley, so we've got a nice big cupboard here. The owner's got a few bits and bobs down in there. Um, we've got this little cupboard arrangement, there's plates and things come with the boat and a, and a little drawer as well. Then we've got a shelf above it and also a shelf um, unit and a storage unit then to the left hand side of the galley too. So. Um, condition wise it's all very good, we've got a pressurised um, uh, tap here with hot and cold running water um, and uh, yeah it, it, it's really handy thing to have if you want to prepare food on board or if you're spending a weekend away um, it means you can you know you can be self-sufficient whenever you're on the boat. As we come down the stairs on the port side we've got access into the aft cabin arrangement so there's a double bed in there and because this boat again is because it's that bit longer than standard you know 27 and a half feet means that this sort of space really opens up you get a nice wide entryway in there we've got our 12 volt and 240 volt switch panels uh, down in there as well so they're easy to access and you get your main circuit breaker and stuff there too obviously being an, uh, a European boat sea stamped uh, and an official UK import the power electrical systems all proper 240 volts and, and all that type of thing on the starboard side as we come into the cabin then we've got our uh, toilet and shower compartment so this is a really decent sized compartment actually we've got a um, proper pump out toilet there's also a macerator and things on the boat with the, you've got your little switch panel there for for emptying the 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 tanks out we've got this pressurized hot and cold water tap and it also pulls out to use as a, as a shower so the whole compartment is fully lined and drained we've got a little vanity uh, unit in there and uh, overhead light and stuff so perfect again if you're spending extended periods of time on board or even if you're just out for day trips the fact you've got a toilet there really does open up a lot of you know you can extend your horizons on board so being that bit longer than your standard entry level cruiser as well it means that you get more access uh, bigger access space into the aft cabin so we've got a nice wide entry here um, just behind the galley into the aft cabin area so there's a good headroom in there, we've got an overhead light, reading light, at the head of the bed. We've also got this opening port light that opens out into the cockpit there for a bit of natural light and ventilation. And we've got storage at the head of the bed also, and a good sized shelf, a couple of boat hooks and stuff on there. And then uh, a nice big double bed. So it's good sized double, and the condition of everything in here is perfect, all the headlining, and the mattress and everything is uh, totally pristine, bone dry. It's all very nice. So up at the, the front of the cabin then, we've got this standard um, V-berth arrangement. So it's a, it's a U-shaped seating arrangement during the day around this um, big table with fiddled edges and things. And then at night time, you can drop the table down, put in the filler cushions and it makes up into a big double. So we'll make that up and show you in a, in a little minute. Um, but uh, again, the, the, main, the, the main thing that strikes me in here is how spacious an area the cabin feels. Um, there's loads of headroom right the way up to the front of the boat. Um, at the entryway into the boat, there must be a good, you know, sort of probably six or six foot four inches of headroom in the cabin, and you know that carries forward right to the front. It's nice and bright and airy as well. So we've got a big opening deck hatch here. We've got four portholes as well um, around the back of the, the seat backs there. Um, so it, the, the the cabin is a nice place to spend time. You know, if if you've got kids and the, you know you can send them down here to you know, watch DVDs or play or whatever um, and if you're sitting in here um, having a cup of tea or something during the day as well it's you know nice bright area it doesn't feel claustrophobic or anything um, the condition of everything in here is really nice as well all the joinery is in great shape we've got a little storage and um, compartment there in front of the the toilet um, all the doors the, the the galley unit and the upholstery as well is all uh, in top notch condition it doesn't really look like it's been used very much down here at all um, all the lights and things, everything's, everything's working as it should. We've also got a couple of speakers for the stereo down here too. 
just quickly wanted to show you um, this forward cabin with the V-breath set up. So there's two filler pieces go in there. There's three support poles underneath, and it makes up a huge big double actually in the front of this front of this boat. Uh, again, all the cushions are all in perfect condition, um, as is the rest of the cabin here as well. So there you have it. Hopefully that gives you uh, a good idea of the the features, the facilities, and the the, you know, the general condition of this Glastron uh, GS279. Like I said, I think it's got everything going for it. You know, it's a 27 and a half feet long, gives you that much more room than your standard entry level sports cruiser. Also, with a beam of eight foot six, means you can trailer it to new cruising grounds. Uh, you can take it to you know off site from the marinas for storage and keep your, your running costs down as well. The boat um, has a diesel engine, that Volvo CAD 32, really well proven, reliable, and, and a punchy uh, power unit as well. And it comes complete with everything you could need. You know, it's on a trailer. It's got a good spec. It's got a chart plotter, VHF radio, anchor, windlass. You got that nice radar arch, remote control, spotlight, full set of camper covers as well. Um, and like for under 30 grand, that's just fantastic value. Um, so yeah, I think it's going to make a great buy for somebody. Um, and uh, we welcome any inspection, survey, you know, whatever you want. If you are interested in the boat and you want to take it a step further. Um, then please don't hesitate to get in touch with me. Just give me a call or drop me an email or you can fill out the callback request form on the website and I can call you at a time that's convenient. Thanks for your time. Thanks for watching.